Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, good morning and good evening to everyone. Welcome to the Youth Dialogue on Entrepreneurship and Innovation for Sustainable Development Goals. My name is Jia Jun Grace Wang, Deputy Director of the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation. It is a great pleasure to moderate the dialogue today. I would first like to extend my thanks to the United Nations Resident Coordinator's Office in China and the Tungsten Group for organizing this youth dialogue series and the SDGs youth campaign. I would also like to thank Phoenix TV, Shenzhen Youth Federation, UNFPA, and this dialogue aims to promote youth innovation and entrepreneurship for achieving the Sustainable Development Goals through South-South and Triangular Cooperation. Today, we will hear from many young international and Chinese entrepreneurs who will share their innovative initiatives and entrepreneurship journey. This dialogue is organized to enter the UNOSSG's Youth for South program which is designed to support young leaders, entrepreneurs, and champions from developing countries to work together in advancing sustainable development in their communities and home countries. So we will now share a video message with you as an introduction of the Youth for South program by Mr. Ho Hei Chadia, Envoy of the SG on South South Cooperation, and Ms. Jetma Wikramanayaki, Envoy of the SG on Youth, through this video. So please play the video now. Hello, everyone. My name is Jayatma. My name is Jorge. And today, we are here together to share a special message with young people all around the world and share real actions and initiatives that matter. More than half of the world's population today is under the age of 30, with the vast majority of them living in developing countries. Our work to achieve a better future for everyone, everywhere, through the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is more relevant today than ever. That is why we developed the Youth for South initiative, an advanced youth leadership program with many partners. Welcoming many of these partners to the table, this initiative gives young people from developing countries the tools to adapt and utilize South-South and Triangular cooperation for their needs, as well as to scale up solutions, to really bring sustainable development to the reality of their local communities and their home countries. Youth for South provides concrete opportunities for young people by supporting capacity development through trainings and workshops, facilitating exchange of knowledge and mutual learning, providing access to experts, mentorships, resources and global networks, offering funded fellowships and scholarship opportunities, and supporting emerging and established entrepreneurs from developing countries to foster sustained growth for their ventures. Of the almost 1.2 billion young people that live together in the world, the majority call the Global South their home. The ability to harness the demographic dividend that this represents and the amazing potential of young people depend on investments in their capacities, entrepreneurship and innovation and the opportunities that are provided to them. South-South and triangular cooperation can play an essential role in strengthening these capabilities. Guided by a principle of mutual benefit and learning, South-South cooperation leverage education and innovation to create employment opportunities, particularly particularly in the areas of science and technology. There is much to be done, and that is why we need more action-oriented and walk-the-talk initiatives for young people's development and empowerment. Let's all take some action now. And let's not act alone, but act together. Join, Join us, us in, in the, the Youth, Youth for South, South initiative today. today. As the video says, let's act, and not act alone, act together. Now, with that, I would like to welcome Mr. Jorge Shadia, 
Director of the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation and Envoy of the Secretary General on South-South Cooperation to provide opening remarks. Mr. Javier, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Grace. It's a pleasure to be live in addition to the videotape we just saw. First, I want to say it's a great pleasure for me to be participating in this forum. I want to thank the United Nations Office of the Resident Coordinator in China, the Tencent Group for organizing these dialogues. I would also like to thank our partners of UNOSC, including the UN Population Fund, Phoenix TV, and the Shenzhen Youth Federation. And the idea of having this event is because entrepreneurship is key to improving the quality of lives of people. We need to grow the economy, as has been exemplified by China's reform and opening up process that built on the regulation that was relaxed or made entrepreneurship friendship, but was matched by a very strong entrepreneurial spirit of the Chinese people, of the Chinese youth, to take opportunity and generate an extraordinary development model, which is an example for the world. So now, in that context, it is very important for us to find opportunities to share how young people can develop the potential for their entrepreneurial capabilities to contribute to their own improvement, to the, to improvement of their societies by creating jobs, by increasing productivity, by generating new markets, etc. For that, it is very important that we develop principles of mentorship, support, and take advantage of the new technologies we have to provide this support across borders, across countries, which in addition to supporting the development of small and medium-sized enterprises led by youth can also generate new markets and new opportunities. So it is very important also that we have this event in the context of the COVID pandemic. The COVID pandemic will cause that for the first time since human development is measured by the United Nations, we're going to have a loss of the global indicators of human development. So in order to bounce back from the negative effects of the pandemic, we will need much more economic growth, we will need much more entrepreneurship, we will need much more generation of employment. So it is very important that we facilitate the establishment of strong ecosystems to ensure that we can bounce back and as our Secretary General says, build back better. So, uh, our office is committed to promoting this type of exchanges with the partners I mentioned at the beginning. One of our initiatives is Youth Entrepreneurs for South, which, for which I really want to thank especially the Change Youth Federation to train thousands of African entrepreneurs and provide them with opportunities for growth. We hope that this initiative can succeed in itself and can also be expanded horizontally and vertically to ensure that we create networks of young entrepreneurs throughout the world. Uh, also, we have conducted other exercises already. Some trainings have taken place. Also, we have created Shark Tank, Shark Tank style youth leadership. So we also help giant, young entrepreneurs to build their pitch and also to generate seed funding for the work. And uh, we had 28 youth champions nominated by UNDP that competed with a thousand youth from Jensen to Shenzhen globally and in person. We look forward to continue to organize these activities and more importantly to continue advocating for everybody to do it. Because the idea of all of us working together helping develop young entrepreneurs all over the world will really lead to the vision of a common future for humankind in prosperity and peace. 
So thank you very much. Look forward to hearing from young entrepreneurs. It always reinforces our commitment to doing things better. And good luck. And let's continue working together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chadiak. Uh, Phoenix TV has been supporting you and OSSC's efforts in promoting South South and Triangular cooperation through knowledge sharing, through advocacy, and through supporting the program. Mr. Chadiak just mentioned Youth for South. Now I have the pleasure to uh, welcome Ms. Dian Dian Liu, Deputy Director of Phoenix Chinese Channel, to share her views through a video message. So now is the opening remarks by Ms. Liu. Please uh, share the video message. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Liu Dian Dian, and I'm here on behalf of Phoenix Television. As we all know, innovation has been the key buzzword of the past decade. Together with innovation and the development of new industries, the global spotlight has also shifted to youth, the vanguard of our future generation. To help support and promote youth innovation, Phoenix Television is pleased to collaborate with the United Nations Office of South South Corporation and Tencent through its Odyssey of the Dragon Project. Our 2020 UNOSSC Youth Dialogue and Competition helps promote innovative youth projects in agriculture, manufacturing, and other industries in developing nations and less developed areas. The dialogue is focused on helping youth to take part in innovation projects and encouraging markets to absorb the products and services they create. Every year, Phoenix Television hosts the Miss Chinese Cosmos pageant, whereby the contestants visit different villages at the focus of China's poverty elevation efforts through the Phoenix Media Platform. This project helps to highlight how local municipalities and the governments are harnessing innovation to elevate poverty, raise local living standards, and promote urban development. In addition, the Phoenix TV Small and Media Enterprise Alliance features many youth entrepreneurs. We are currently developing a new platform to match this SMEs with the investors to help them find findings for their innovative or green-friendly project. Over the past over the past five years, our flagship program on China's overseas economic developments, Odyssey of the Dragon, has helped chronicle a wide variety of South-South development projects. In the spirit of innovation, the Odyssey platform now helps to link business leaders and global thinkers in support of the UN's 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Initiated by the UNOSSC, South South Galaxy is another example of leveraging innovation for the SDGs. South South Galaxy is an online global knowledge sharing and partnership brokering platform. It supports developing nations to contact, learn, and collaborate with their Southern partners. We sincerely hope and believe that this new initiative developed together with the United Nations can help us make a positive impact on the emerging markets and industry of tomorrow while benefiting their host communities today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Liu, for the introduction of this various youth and South South Cooperation Initiative. This indeed shows us the power of media. And uh, we look forward to more progresses of this initiatives and strengthening our partnership with Phoenix TV and with all our media partners. Now I'm pleased to share with you that today, Mr. Lang Lang, an exceptional panelist, UN Messenger for Peace, UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador Illumini, has sent us a special message too, to share his thoughts on youth, 
Sustainable Development and Southwest Cooperation. So let's hear what Lang Lang has to say to young friends all over the world. Hello, so my dear you. young friends. I'm Lang Lang. I'm a messenger of peace for the United Nations. I would like to first thank the kind invitation from the United Nations office for South South cooperation. I am a strong believer and supporter of the cause of the United Nations. I always want to make my own contribution to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goal. Today, I am here to share some of my inspiration about youth innovation and entrepreneurship. Growing up and trained as a performing pianist in my early years in China, I myself have embraced new technology and innovation. To lead the way in bringing classical music into the 21st century, to inspire and motivate the next generation of music lovers and performers. I have personally selected a number of talented young pianists, offering them mentorship and unique opportunities for performance through my Long Long International in the Music Foundation, using modern technologies and online platforms. Young people are drivers for innovations and good results in societies. Cultivating innovation and entrepreneurship amongst youth is key for achieving the SDGs. Young people are faced with multi-dimensional challenges today. We must ensure that young people are not left behind. I am very happy to learn that guided by a principle of mutual benefit and learning, the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation has developed the Youth for South Advanced Youth Leadership Program to support capacity development and skills education for youth leaders from developing countries in order to contribute to the sustainable development of their home country and local communities. Young friends, let's not wait for our future to come. Let's make our future from today. Thank you. Well, it's really inspiring to hear from Lang Lang's personal story, not only as a young person seeking uh, more contribution to society, but also as a mentor to help other young people to achieve their aspiration. Thank you very much. We will hear more of such stories from our speakers today. So now, uh, as I introduce, Shenzhen Federation of Youth Entrepreneurship Promotion has been a long-standing partner of the Youth for South program and has jointly organized capacity building trainings, mentorship activities for young entrepreneurs in 2019. Now I have the pleasure to welcome Mr. Yuan Huo Hong, founder and CEO of Bliss Small, Deputy Executive Director of Shenzhen Federation of Youth Entrepreneurship and Promotion. Mr. Yuan is also a very successful entrepreneur born in the post-80 era, Ba Ling Ho. He will start with a short video to share his journey as a young entrepreneur, lessons learned from challenges, followed by a PowerPoint presentation on how he was able to utilize cutting edge technology for his enterprise. So, Mr. Yuan Huo Hong, the floor is yours. Dear Mr. Shadik, Director Xiao Jin, friends. Hello, I'm Yuan Huo Hong, founder of Bliss Cake. I'm honored to participate in this online dialogue. First of all, I'd like to share with you a two-minute video to um, share with you my journey as an entrepreneur. Three, two, one, action. In my 16, I started to learn to make cakes as an apprentice. At that time, there was only one thing in my mind, 
open a store. In 10 years, three times the store had been opened. Also, three times the store had been closed. I had brought home to me that business is not a craft, but a sale. It's no good relying solely on craftsmanship, but good on technology. In 2008, I set up Bliss Cake using the last 20,000 yuan. In 2013, I had 40 stores. However, the rise of mobile internet completely changes people's consumption habits. New technology needs new ideas. If I do not transform, I must choose to destroy my devotion. If you don't transform, you will die and close the shop. Finally, I transformed my stores from offline into online. In the previous model, consumers looked for the products, but now the products are looking for its consumers. With the help of third-party mobile marketing product information, we can reach users quickly and build satellite factories closer to users. Delivered within two to five hours, our products will be, which are all current food, fresh and instant. In the digital age, the key is new technology and new ideas. Open another shop, I would do new retail. Being a data-oriented internet baking enterprise, and through the modern logistics, big data and cloud computing, we are bound to make the consumers get their want in the first time. And we think of those which consumers fail to have at heart. You can get it the first time you want it to come to your mind. Thank you for watching. Just over 10 years, Bliss Cake has grown from originalized traditional stores to a new retail brand driven by data and technology. In total, we have provided products and services to over 300 million consumers. Looking back, I have three points to share with you. First of all, efforts will never be wasted. I'm in my 40s. I started my career at the age of 16. I opened my first shop in 19, at the age of 19. It went bust. And uh, 22 years old the second time, 28 years old the third one. Three times of failures to me. are all lessons for me to learn. I have faith in my efforts. Each time I failed, I reflected on the journey and to come up with why I failed. And I always believe that I will succeed eventually. In 2008, I set up Bliss Kick. Also, secondly, I have created some values to be shared among our employees. The first one is stream. Because all of your ideas, all of your entrepreneurship are based on dreams. Your deeply rooted dreams that will drive and keep you going forward. So dream and having a dream is quite important. And also you need to have perseverance to stick to what you believe. Based on my past years of doing business, Believe, believing in what you do is quite important. Also, we need to be passionate for what we do. Regardless of all obstacles and difficulties, we need to be fully devoted. And also as a company, I never stop thinking about improving values for my customers as well as for my employees. Be optimistic. Every time you fail, learn and then be optimistic and continue. Of course, self-correction is quite important. When you make a mistake, correct it. Because the utmost goal is to meet and satisfy the needs of our customers and make them happy. That's quite important. The third tip is that you will come across lots of issues and problems. But I believe that we always have a lot of methods, and methods are always more than those difficulties. And next, I'd like to share my personal views on social responsibility. After the outbreak of COVID-19, we donated 1 million RMB for the purchase of supplies. Then we called upon more than 200 partners in China, 
We visited and helped a lot of frontline workers and facilities for the donations and these activities we did. We actively promoted and called upon our partners to participate during this nonprofit campaigns. Why do we do this? Because doing business is never just about personal development or expanding your business. You need to have altruism and to fulfill social responsibility, create more values. Starting from 2015, we initiated a lot of campaigns like the sharing campaigns and also open partnership campaigns among our employees to untap the potentials of our staff through setting up standards, provide trainings, introducing concepts. We help partners from both upper stream and lower stream to improve their capacity and improve their productivity. By setting standards, by doing all of this, we are able to create a lot of happiness. Happiness is through sharing, is through mutual help. We have created in total more than 8,000 jobs for society and in the future we're about to open an extra of 10,000 stores, creating 100,000 jobs in the future. This is also contributing to SDG 8, creating jobs. That's all for my sharing. Thanks Thank for you listening. very much, Mr. Yue, for your uh, story. We all know being an entrepreneur is never a smooth process. There are ups and downs, success and failures, but it's such a learning for all the young people who have that aspiration to know that persistence works. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing the aspiration of your company. We will have three more young entrepreneurs who will share with us their initiatives, experiences, and their reflections with us to address challenges in achieving different SDGs. Now I have the pleasure to introduce Mr. Cyril Alexis Altabil. Cyril was among the winners from competitions organized by UN Office for South South Cooperation during the 2019 International Youth Conference held in Shenzhen and was nominated by UNFPA as a young champion. He's the founder of You Must Know initiative from Ghana, which provides sexual and reproductive health information to young people in the country. So, Saria, the floor is yours. Thank you very much um, for this opportunity. And good, good um, afternoon from Ghana to everyone. So I'll take you through the journey, the challenges and the success of the You Must Know application. So this application seeks to bring adolescents reproductive health a step closer to young people. Next, please. So young people live purposeful lives, especially when they are well informed. Young people need to be given the opportunity to be well informed for them to live the life that is worth living, and for them to be able to contribute meaningfully to society. And this is the reason for which we created this application. Next, please. So the application is meant to contribute to SDG Goal 3, which is good health and well-being. Now, the engagement of a technical team was what we started with, a technical team of adolescent health experts at the national level. And we realized that we can't do this thing without young people themselves, because this application is for them. So as you see the picture, we presented this thing, this application to young people for them to make their own inputs and for them to tell us what we need to add and take out for it to be able to represent what they want. When we finished, we took this application back to these people for them to validate and tell us that. And at the end of the day, we came up with an application 
which young people like. Next, please. So why this application? So this application is because young people are a resilient and technologically savvy generation, as you can see. The You Must Know application was birthed out of the need to make sure that young people have access to sexual and reproductive health information for informed decision making. This application was designed for young people with phones. And in Ghana, the mobile phone usage is 40.93 million as of 2018, and the internet usage is 10.11. That means that even with this, there are some people who may necessarily still be disadvantaged. But with the people who are advantaged to be able to have this, we want to be able to help them so they can also help their peers who don't have access to mobile phones. Next, please. So our target group is young people, teachers, and then parents. Young people is our primary target group because they are the beneficiaries of this. And then teachers, for them to also know what to teach young people in schools. And then parents, for them to be also informed on how to engage their children in the house on parental discussions about sexual and reproductive health. Next, please. Welcome to the application. So this is how the application looks like. We have a portion for news, and we have a portion for a clinic, a portion for general social media news, and another portion, which is for the events, for events that are happening, pertaining young people, and then videos on um, trigger stories about sexual and reproductive health, and a chit chat with a nurse. Next, please. So the education, the filler education portion gives you um, information about diabetes, um, our newsletters, our action kits, and information on sexual reproductive health. The youth clinic links you to a clinic that is near you for, for youth-friendly services on sexual health. Now, this is very important because in, in my country, young people are seen as those who shouldn't necessarily be engaging in sexual activities. But that's, that's a lie because young people actually engage in sexual activities and they need the right information. But we need youth friendly services for these people so that they are not discriminated against. So when you click this, it gives you an access to the youth clinic that is around you. The social media takes you to our social media pages. And we have a portion for um, chit chats with the counselor to talk about the things that you need um, or things that you are going through online. You don't necessarily have to go to their place. So in terms of this pandemic, you can utilize the chit chat more. Next, please. So other features are periodic messages and SMS to users. It can, it can tell, the app can send you messages on um, lots of other issues. So you don't necessarily need to be connected to the internet. And it is run on 90% offline and 10% online. And it is based on the, uh, it's based on Android and yet to be on iOS. Next, please. So our scale-up plan is to reach 2 million young people with sexual reproductive health information and link them to youth-friendly services by 2030, because that is, the, that is the, 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 the climax of the SDG, and that's when we need to reach the SDG goals. So that is our main aim, to be able to reach young people with SRH information and link them to services by 2030. Next, please. Now, our ongoing upgrades, we, we are introducing a bot and we are training it through machine learning and artificial intelligence to be able to give young people first-hand information upon request with a real-life counselor, when a real-life counselor is unavailable, and give periodic reminders and messaging to young people based on their interests and their health. So this bot can tell a young girl that, hey, in two days, you will be menstruating per the last menstruation you had. So you need to get yourself a, a menstrual cup, a menstrual sanitary towel in your bag, or you need to wear it now, just in case you start menstruating. So this is what we are doing right now. So we're able to train a bot to be able to do all these things. So it becomes like the Siri for health information. Next, please. Our challenges as we are facing now is general upgrades based on, on, on user feedback layout. And then counseling section 
and then um, the teacher needs an upgrade to be able um, to have 24 7 services going on which is what's not happening now we want to have 24 7 services for young people because some people may need it in the dark eyes of the night and we need to be able to be there for them and we need to make it accessible on the app store for non-android users and support for intensive communication strategy to increase uptake of users. We need to make um, this application um, more widespread. We need to do a lot of information and sharing of information about this application more than we are doing now. So that is one thing that we need to look at more. And that is um, what we are doing. We are intensifying that. And we need to be rated, we want to be rated by the WHO Youth Friendly Service Assessment for the youth clinics. Next slide, please. Now, access access. So the application has become the number one reference application for civil society organizations in terms of information and linked to service facilities. So when it comes to services and youth-friendly services and information, this application is the number one go-to place for all these things for young people here in Ghana. And the application was one of the winners at the at last year's startup salad. As you can see my picture, holding my beautiful black. It was an honor to be part of, of, of this. And then during the lockdown, the virtual world became more alive, and the sole source of information and service delivery was the application. And it became more relevant as it's aided in the education of sexual and gender-based violence and teenage pregnancy. Because now people, there was a lot of sexual and gender-based violence when there was the lockdown during the pandemic. You may have seen this in recent news. And the application became the sole source of information because the application can also link you to services in the justice system. So if you have been raped, you can link onto this application and get services that will link you to the justice system for, for the perpetrators of this illegal act to be brought to the book. And this application now is the go-to application that every CSO is looking up to to do similar things in that regard for young people. And we've been able to chop practices. Now, a lot of people want to advertise on the application, and that is how successful this application has been in the past year. Next slide, please. And this is the end of, the, of my presentation. I just want to remind you that young people are not the future. We are not the future. We are the now. We need investments in young people because we form the biggest population in the world. And the right investment in us, we will take the world to a better place. If we want to see the world to flourish, we need to make the right investment in young people. Thank you, and I have been civil letters also. And this application was jointly made by, um, as you can see, by um, we have partners with the Ghana Health Service, with UNFPA, and Ghana Health Service did a lot in making sure this application came to pass. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cyril. Now we would like to introduce Ms. George Hao. Ms. George Hao was also among the winners from competitions we organized during the 2019 International Youth Conference and was nominated by UNDP as a youth champion. Her initiative, Remake Hub, is a young social enterprise which provides critical solutions for waste pollution management in fashion industry by transforming waste into new generational lifestyle products through high-tech innovative material and sustainable design. So, Ms. Zhao, the floor is yours. Thanks, Ron. Um, Hello, ladies and gentlemen and distinguished guests. It's my great honor to be here and sharing our stories. So today I will bring uh, you guys what is called the magic of remaking ocean waste. 
Um, next, please. So our startup uh, is called Remake Hub. Um, basically, we are a social enterprise, and now we are also on the UNDP Youth Collab program. So our main purpose is we wanted to turn uh, different kind of waste into uh, reusable and more valuable products and materials through innovative technology and creative design. Next. So how to save our earth? It is a problem and it is only the problem of how fast we can help our planet. Next. So if we look at the age of Earth, it is 4.6 billion years old. And our humankind is only 120,000. If we turn them into a 24 hours, we only lived three seconds. Next. But what have we done in the three seconds? We, it is estimated that we threw 640,000 tons of fishing nets into the ocean, and it's almost like 50,000 double decker buses. Next. What's more, that in the latest time, we see two beautiful sperm whales that they were died because of those fishing nets, and those beautiful animals, they were not supposed to be died from fishing net because it is a human waste. Next. We all know that more than 100,000 animals, sea animals, that they suffered from those fishing nets. Next. So we thought the waste is far away from us. It's in the ocean, right? No, because it ends up in our food and water chain. It becomes microplastics and it goes into back our body. And it also causes us lots of bad economic damages, estimated to five to 19 billion US dollars every year. Unbelievable. Next. We try to do volunteers. We dive into the sea in Asia Pacific. We try to communicate with the fishing nets, uh, fishing companies and the local uh, fishermen, ask them and help them to collect those fishing nets. So what do we do with them? Next. On the market, we already see lots of applications. The most famous ones are the Adidas that they turn fishing nets into beautiful sneakers. And also Prada has turned fishing nets into bags. Next. We can turn them into t-shirts and shirts as well. Next. So this is called circular economy. We wanted to use the waste and through technology goes back into more usable, uh, re, uh, valuable products. Next. So we wanted to do business for good and how we will do. We will turn the pollution fishing nets into a solution, which is the renewable nylon. So in this way, we can stop fishing net being discarded into ocean and remake them into more valuable material to save the ocean. Next. So how we do, we work with NGO, third party fishing companies, then we transfer all those waste into our own lab and our own factories. We will do the processing in mainland China then after that, we can apply it into different products. Next. So we are targeting few industries, for example, eyewear, uh, furniture, and electronic industries. Next. Um, our well-known, very well-known uh, application is a collaboration with WWF Australia. We turned uh, 500 kilogram of fishing nets into 2,000 sunglasses, which is already online. Next. And we also used a blockchain technology, uh, which we call it the ReFuture. We traced the whole journey from the very beginning where it was collected mm -hmm. and into how it was 
processed and where it was processed, as well as a campaign from WWF to help to spread this information into more um, communities. Next. Uh, what's more, we also applied into fashion industries. We made them into uh, buttons and zippers. Next. As well as the uh, furniture industry, we can now produce very beautiful indoor furniture like chairs. Next. So all of this, what we have done is we wanted to combat the global challenges, especially the waste pollution. We wanted to bring back the balance in the, uh, in the marine lives and we wanted to um, clean up the ocean plastic waste. Next. We're very happy that we are highly committed to eight SDG goals and our main um, pur purpose of uh, establishing this initiative is trying to um, combat all those challenges that we humankind faces. Next. And here for a Remake Ocean, we are particularly focused on number 14 goal, life below water. Next. So after this two years work, we have been recognized um, in, by different organizations and we have uh, been winning Forbes uh, as well as the latest one is UNEP, Low Carbon Life um, Challenges. We are also one of the winner. Next. So uh, we're very happy. Uh, we have shared lots of our stories in different kind of media channels. And we have also been on the Phoenix News before as well. Next. So in 2022, we wish that we could prevent 10,000 tons of ghost fishing net and to influence 100 million ocean lovers worldwide we would love to have all of you today together to support us. Next. So now we are calling for alliance um, because we all know that in order to stop humankind to spread and to consume more, way, um, consume more resources from the planet, we need everyone to be together and to work together to see what solutions we can apply right now. Thanks. Uh, here we want to quote what Martin Luther King said, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircases. Thanks.